Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ruben Mbuki. So we are going to continue the lecture that uh, we had last time. I did introduce lung volumes and capacities. So we are just starting from where we ended. But before we start looking at uh, this diagram, and let me just try to go back and uh, go through what we learned, okay? We did talk about the lung volumes and uh, we never touched capacities, okay? So what you are seeing right now on the screen, we have got about four different types of what? Uh, volumes, okay? We have got tidal volume, there's inspiratory reserve volume and expiratory reserve volume and also residue volume, okay? So these lung volumes, you need to understand them, okay? Then when you talk about capacities, like we discussed in the previous lecture, is that it's a combination of two or more lung volumes, okay? So you need to know what is residue volume, okay? We're talking about the amount of air that remains in the lung after a what? Complete exhalation of air or removal of air from the lungs. The air that remains in the lungs, that's known as what? Residue volume. Tidal volume, you need to know what is it. Tidal volume talks about what? The amount of air that can be removed in and out under normal breathing, okay? And it's about approximately 500 mils, okay? The total lung capacity, as we discussed uh, last time, is about 6 liters or 6,000 mils. Inspiratory reserve volume and expiratory reserve volume, inspiratory forced breathing in. Expiratory reserve volume, forced breathing out, okay? So these two talk about the amount of air that is uh, breathed out forcibly, okay? Now let's go to the diagram since we know why we ended, okay? So we have got what we call inspiration and expiration. So when you look at this, let me just zoom it in a bit, okay? All right. So what we are seeing here right now is uh, a diagram trying to help us understand the different types of capacities, okay? We have got one. Let's talk about first the volumes, okay? We have talked about tidal volume. So this is the tidal volume. It was about 500 watt mils. Okay. The amount of air that can be taken in and out under normal breathing or quiet breathing. Then the amount of water that can be forcibly exhaled. Oh, sorry, inhaled. Is what? The amount of air that can be forcibly inhaled. It's what? Inspiratory reserve volume. Okay. From there to there. Remember that this starts after tidal volume ends. So when tidal volume ends, then it starts. Then when you talk about expiratory reserve volume, this starts after what? Tidal expiration, okay? That's the way it is. So when you remove everything out, okay? So it's a combination of expiratory reserve volume. It removes everything, okay? Which is forced breathing. When you talk about residue volume, okay? What you are seeing here is talking about residue volume, the amount of air that remains in the lungs, okay? So this hair that is here, it's not tempered with okay it has to remain in the lungs whether you are breathing forcibly which is an active process or not this hair remains where in the lungs okay then now let's go to the capacities okay i like i said in the beginning total lung capacity is equal to what six thousand mils so when you look at it starting from here down going up to there six thousand liters this total lung capacity. So this total lung capacity is a summation of these four volumes. Inspiratory reserve volume, total, tidal volume, expiratory reserve volume, and residue volume. When you sum them up, they'll give you what? 6,000 liters, okay? The amount of air that can be taken out. All these, they sum up to 6 liters. So now, we can look at now total lung capacity here, okay? It can also be calculated in different ways, okay? But before we talk about those calculations, let's talk about now the different types of capacity. There are about four. Total lung capacity, which I've talked about, this is also what we call vital capacity, which is known as VC, not vice chancellor, but VC, vital capacity, which involves three things, expiratory reserve volume, tidal volume, and inspiratory reserve volume. It involves three things, okay? Let's look at another one here. From there, this one, functional residue capacity. It involves two things, expiratory reserve volume and residue volume. Then you also have got what we call inspiratory capacity, okay? which involves two things, tidal volume and inspiratory reserve volume, okay? So we have got four, total, uh, total lung capacity, functional residue capacity, vital capacity, and inspiratory capacity, okay? But you need to know how do we sum up these figures, okay? Because they say that 
somehow lang function can be tested tested by using what these uh, capacities okay you can know how healthy the lungs are okay so look at it we can sum up there are formulas that you're going to come up as we go on with uh, the video or the lecture okay so now you need to know what these are what they involve or what they consist okay let's go on the next slide this is the same diagram just but it's just the same one but uh it's just been trying to show you that the initials or the abbreviations okay or the acronyms of total lung capacity tlc ic vc frc rv erv tv and irv you need to know them okay you need to appreciate them so lung capacities in describing events in the pulmonary cycle it's Or determine functioning lungs okay lung capacities so these are the different types okay so inspiratory capacity i see okay the total amount of the air that can be inspired after a tidal expiration okay it happens after what a tidal expiration okay irv plus tv is equal to 2500 mils then function residue capacity frc amount of air remaining in the lungs after a tidal expiration which is what RV residue volume plus ERV and is equal to what 2500 milliliters or 2.5 liters vital capacity of VC it involves three things okay the total amount of air that can be expired after inspiration TV plus RV plus ERV total lung capacity TLC the sum of all the lung volumes approximately six liters in males in females is less so that's lung capacities okay now we can go now to look at the importance of functional residue capacity okay for continuous exchange of gases between the alveoli and the blood as tv is going in and out which is what tidal volume in and out only about 350 mils of tidal volume is added to the frc which is what functional residue capacity only about 350 okay so functional residue capacity if you remember it involves two things inspiratory reserve inspiratory reserve volume expiratory reserve volume sorry expiratory reserve volume plus the residue volume okay then you add tidal volume okay that's all so all pulmonary volumes and capacity are about 2 to 25 percent less in women than in men and they are greater in the greater in large and athletic people than in small and anesthetic people lung volumes and capacity these are different types of formulas you can come up with to calculate lung volumes and capacities okay VC is equal to IRV plus VT plus ERV. VC is can be also IC plus ERV. TLC, which is tied to total lung capacity, is equal to VC plus RV. Total lung capacity can also be IC plus FRC. Then FRC, which is functional residue capacity, can also be ERV plus RV. These are the different combination of formulas that you can come up with. Okay. So we end here on talking about lung capacities okay so that you can be able to watch this short video and the first part which talked about the introduction about the lung volumes then you can appreciate the next part that you're going to talk about which will be the third lecture on uh lung capacities and volumes thank you very much for your time